Here the book, this is written to Theophilus. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Verse 1. So the book of Acts is addressed to the Theophilus. Theophilus means friend of God. So when Luke wrote this book, we don't know whether he's addressing to single person or multiple people. So we believe it may be multiple people because Theophilus, Theophilus, friend of God. So those who are friends to God, now I'm going to share the word of God to you. So Theophilus, listen carefully. We know about a Good Friday. But, Palm uh, Sunday is there. Then we celebrate. Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah. Then comes Good Friday. Yeah. Then we come at the Easter Sunday. Yeah. Then we forget about Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday, we sing Hosanna, Hosanna with the leaves. Good Friday comes, we wear black clothes and mourn. God did not forget us. God did not forget his disciples. So what Jesus did, he stayed in the world after his resurrection 40 days. 40 days he was with his disciples. Jesus does not leave them and then goes away. But Jesus taught them and leave with them. Now the first is the resurrection ministry. First of all, Jesus is resurrected. The disciples, among them, the Mary Magdalene thought that somebody have stolen his body. And the disciple thought, oh, they will blame us again that we are the one who have taken and stolen his body. So with fear, they went and hid or went somewhere else. So they thought Jesus is gone. But Jesus didn't leave them. Jesus was with them. He was, he wanted to show that he is alive. Jesus' resurrection does not prove only by the empty tomb. Jesus' resurrection is proved by that he, after his resurrection, he was dwelling with his people. He was with them. Verse 3, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proof. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So you know, Jesus' proof of resurrection is not by the tomb, by the empty tomb, but by his living along with his disciples. The empty tomb is that people many have assumption that somebody has stolen his body. And even the, some of the soldiers who are guarding the tomb also, they lied. Empty tomb doesn't do anything, you know. But it is his resurrection that he was, he was living with his disciples that proved that he was alive. Verse 3 says, He shew himself That's alive true. after his passion by many infallible proof. What are these infallible proofs? He went, when Mary was there in the tomb crying, he showed himself, he called Mary by her name. Then Mary turned and said, my Lord, there only he, she remembers. What about Peter and some of them, seven of them who have gone for fishing? They thought Jesus is gone or stolen or something had happened. We don't know about it, but we will go and do a business. But they did not cast any fish, though they toiled the whole night. Then Jesus was right there at the shore. Yeah. And he asked them to cast the fish, to cast the net. Yeah. They got plenty of fish. Very fish which they are catching. Jesus had already barbecued right there in the shore. So when they were coming to the shore, when the disciples were coming to the shore, no, Jesus was too. already barbecuing that fish there. One of the preachers says, Daniel, when you come to the passage, don't read and understand. It is a time for you to smell because the aroma of the barbecue fish is coming. You know, Jesus taught them that I am still alive. And there was one disciple who was not with them when they were in the room. Yeah, Thomas, he wasn't there. So Thomas said, no, I will never believe until I put my fingers on that hole. So Jesus again come and show to Thomas and all the disciples were there. And the two disciples, they were so dejected, you know, they were so, maybe so many talks of the tongues were going on and they were going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. You know, maybe very sad, maybe long faces and they were uh -huh. worried. You know, living at their heart with black burning. Jesus know that disciples, they are human and they are weak in faith. It's they need heavy. to be strengthened and they need to put to the right faith. Because among the apostles, there is one who denied Jesus Christ three times. And when Jesus was gone, all the disciples, they flee away. When you think about a disciple's character, and, and when you compare with your life, you say, oh, it's like me. Some may be blaming Peter, why did he deny? But you know, you are denying Jesus Christ every day. 
school, when you go out of office, when you sit there, everything you deny. School. In fact, Peter denied only three times. Whereas we do every day. So the disciples were weak human beings. What they need is they need a strength from above. That is the reason why Jesus was with them for 40 days. And 40 days he was teaching them. He was eating with them. Going along with them. To show that he is alive. He. So Jesus alive is not only on Easter Sunday. But from now on. And you know when the disciples. They, were, they think they were lost. Because they followed Jesus for three and a half years. And nothing happens. Jesus was always with them. You know what? Remember. When Jesus called out his disciples. His apostles. He has a purpose when he called them. And the purpose, the disciples, they are not going to fulfill it. But Jesus is going to fulfill it. When God calls you out, yeah, Theophilus, when God calls you out, God has a purpose in you. And God is going to do it. My favorite scripture is Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. And God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes in our troubles, when we face the little storms of a life, or where we are shaken in a, in a sheep or faith. We thought God is not here anymore. Then yes. what we do? We run around. We, we look for somebody to help me out. Or we run to some other people. Mm -hmm. But you know, God is always with us. I when he calls us out, he is going to perform it. It is only God who can do that. Thank so you. in our life, when we are sailing, we may face the storm. Sometimes it may be very calm. But do not be afraid. Jesus is with us. Mm -hmm. What Jesus, he was with them. Then during the, uh, before the Pentecost, he was, uh, he just showed himself for a while and then he'll be gone. Then after the Pentecost, he's not seen anymore. We don't see Jesus Christ in flesh anymore. He works through the Holy Spirit. So because of that, we become such a bold people. When he completes the work upon his disciples, Peter, the man who denied Jesus Christ, he became so bold during the Pentecost, he stood up. And then he said, you are the one who persecute Jesus Christ and kill him. From where the boldness come? Thomas who, who say that I can't believe you. Thomas. Until I put my fingers in you all. No. He is the one who come farthest. Where did he come? He came to India. In, yeah, in Chennai. So, so the one who did that, he came so far. said, my belief, his faith was very weak. But after Jesus walking with them for 40 days and walk with them, talk with them, eat with them, he came furthest. His feet was so bold and so strong. We can never say a doubtful, doubting Thomas anymore. Him. When God is with us, he is going to do it. So do not be discouraged. When you're going through certain things, what you don't like, and never think God has left you alone. He is always with us. He is within us. He walks with us. When we cry, he counts the tears that we shed. When we feel the pain, he knows because he already felt. And now the next he say, uh, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, command them that they, they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Waiting is a different level of faith. We need to exercise it. Faith makes us to do something. Faith also Make us not to do it to learn to wait in God. Waiting means patiently that the word wait to be relaxed, sinking down and lost in God's presence. Psalm 46 Be still and know that I am God. Be still. You know, this Psalm 46, this is written during the war. Yeah, the context is about battle. You are going in a battle. You have a sword in your hands and then all the, 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 those armors are with you. And you see all the enemies around you. And they're shouting, oh, let us kill them now. It's time. You know, they're shouting, oh, the war cry made out. Then the psalmist says that you relax. Sing down, you know, like in a hammock, rock around. Or you go and buy more cheer. One is there, the rock, the rocking chair. What? And then wait, you know, everybody, your enemies are there. Oh, let's kill them. Everybody's coming. But you're saying, hey. this is what God is asking us to do. Thank Jesus you. say as a disciple, wait. If you want to receive a promise, wait. You know, patience is the key to unlock any promise of God. There was a man, he was very impatient and he was praying to God. He was praying to God to give him patience. 
So he was praying, Lord, I am so impatient. You give me patience. You give me patience right now. You don't need that asking also doesn't have patience. Yeah, another joke I like to tell about uh, patience. Once uh, in a very busy street in New York, so in that, the traffic man, he stops all the people coming, the cars and all, he stop and he will let the pedestrian to go. Mm. Then he will stop the pedestrian and he will let the, the flow of the cars. So when he stops the car, he stops the car and he will say, pedestrian! And the pedestrian was... But there was a man, he did not cross, though he asked them to cross about more than seven times. He was still standing. So at last, the eighth time, when the traffic stops the car and say, the pedestrian, this man, he went to the, person, uh, to the traffic police and he said, Sir, I've been waiting patiently for my turn. Don't you also call the Catholics? I'm calling only the Protestant, Protestant. <laughs> but he was waiting patiently. You know, if we really want to unlock certain key of the promises of God, wait, wait, learn to wait. Some of the youths, we don't have that patience. So we say, God, you stay for a while, I will go and seek my own fiancé or my lover. I cannot wait for you. <laughs> so they go around, they know that they have to marry. Parents also know that you have to marry. The church also knows that you have to marry. God also knows and prepare for you to marry. But you cannot wait. So what do you do? Lord, I cannot wait and go and take somebody up and become a disaster. When the time has not reached, it will always bring soreness in our life. When you are not patient in waiting for the promise of God. You know, many Christians, believers, they are suffering because they don't know this faith to wait on God. You keep on asking, Lord, give me now, give me now. No, that's not the way. You know, there was a king called Saul. He was so much, you know, afraid. The Philistines were there drumming. They were started to, you know, with also all clanking the shield and the dong. dong like that. He looked at the Philistine and it was shaken. Huh? He gave his sacrifice. When they don't have the patience to wait for Samuel to arrive, he lost his kingdom. You know, when you don't have patience, you are going to lose things, what you are going to get. And after some time again, the patient is not there. Again, he looks for his own. Then what happened? He lost dynasty. And there was also a man called Jeroboam. Jeroboam was from nowhere. He is not from royal family. But God said Jeroboam should be the king of Israel. Before God's time for him to crown as a king, he wanted to be king. So what he did? He tried to take things and want to become king, afford he made by himself and became a king. Then what happened? He lost kingdom. His children, everything were destroyed, were killed. You know, friends, this is what's going to happen. Unripe fruit tastes sour. Your life, when we don't wait on God, your life is going to be sour. So in verse 7, they ask this question. When he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father had put in his own power. Verse 6 will... Verse 6 we will read. When they therefore come, forth, uh, come together, they ask of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Are you going to restore? They were asking about the time. Jesus said, it's not for you to know about the time. Remember there are many time setters. Because they say that Jesus will come in this year, on this day, on this month, in this place. In 1995, in Korea, they thought that Jesus is going to come, second coming. So there, everybody, they sold their things. But now they are going to be raptured. They they went, in. Yeah, they went and waited there at the, their, their hill. Jesus didn't turn up. They waited for many days. Nothing happens. They sold everything and they, what happened? They go astray from the faith. When Jesus he himself said that I don't even know the date. I don't know about the time. Only the Father knows. And there are people around the world, they think they are the Father. They think they are the Father God and they say Jesus is going to come on this day. Hey, 2000 here, Jesus is going to come in the month of May. So many stories goes around. Do not believe in all these things. Because here also again Jesus said, do not believe in all these things. Because for Christian, we don't think about the past, we don't think about few hours. We have to live our life always in the present. Bible says now is the salvation. Ours is about living 
but present be a christian in the present don't do, don't be a christian for tomorrow there are christians only on sundays here you are christian only here when you are, we are gathered as soon as we go out from the gate you don't become a christian that's why i make a song say i surrender all when i'm in the church i surrender some when i walk from the gate and as i walk out mingle with friend i surrender none this is how we are doing it right so jesus say you be the present always not only the time and the season so that is what god asks us that we should be always christian every day here come the climax verse 8 witness the word you shall be witness unto me both in jerusalem judea Jerusalem, Samaria, Sam and outer part of the earth. So, four layers. You shall be witness. The witness means a person who saw the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It comes from the Greek word called martos. Where the English, they come the word martyr. So, you know, witness means martyr. So when you witness to the people for Jesus Christ, you must have the ability to die for it. And the witness, witness means they don't speak what they think or what they feel. They speak what they saw and what they heard. So when in a witness box, when in a courtroom, he is not speaking, I think like this, I do like this, I he cannot speak that way. He must speak only what he saw and what he heard. Don't and he must be able to die for what he's, what he's witnessing. That's what Jesus called us out to be a witness. To Whatever the case may be, a situation or circumstances it may be, we should be a witness. Now again, I'm going to start saying the diagram, okay? Jerusalem, okay? Remember this, Jerusalem, Judea, Jude, Samaria, Judea, and Samaria. Part of the earth. So the first thing is that where you have to be witness is in the... Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is where that is the home of the disciples. So where you have to be witnessed is your home first. Your house with your members, that is the first place where you have to be witnessed for Christ. Mm -hmm. There was a pastor. He was given to his, he, he, he's, a, you know, he's a man of temper. He, he get angry, you know, and shout so many things in house. Mm -hmm. For little thing, he will be emotionally so high and then he will start shouting and crying and yeah. throwing words. Then sunday came he was preaching about that we should not get angry let, <laughs> let the sun goes down you know those things he was taking out the tax and was preaching that we should not get angry anger is from the satan so after the meeting was over he reached his house and the wife said ah you're preaching huh? yeah. ah, you're preaching and what you're doing here is so different you so the think? wife said you are preaching against anger but you are always getting angry at home to angry getting angry to me you're again against your children he was caught. He cannot speak anything. He was silent for a while. Then he said, My anger is a holy anger. You know, we have to be witness, example first at home. If your wife doesn't believe your preaching, then who is going to believe you? Does your husband believe that you are a very good Christian? Or your children believe that my dad, my parents, they are very good Christians? One of my friends, he said like this. He said like this that, I want to bring my bedroom, my kitchen, everything here right in front of the pulpit and I want to stay here. Did then you? ask, why you want to bring it all here? As look at my wife when he reached here, means in the church, means his, her speaking also so soft and sweet. So it's, I, I will really love her always if he's, yeah. she's like this. But at home, yeah. <laughs> you know, wives in the church so good. <laughs> Is it not? Yeah, so, but as soon as they reach the hospital, it be no more. <laughs> Completely changed. So what God is saying that Jesus said, you should be a witness first at home. If Jesus is resurrected and he is with us, then surely we can be a good witness at home. I know everybody is struggling with this, including me. So, you know, after being a good witness at home, then our neighbor, what do the neighbor say? What does your neighbor say about you? A good believers, a good Christians, you or just say, hey, hypocrite, Pharisee. So, you know, we have to be good Christian to our neighbors. Keep Don't throw head. stones when their duck comes to your house or, the ch or chicken. 
Don't do those things. So And don't throw your plastics. Don't do that. Be a good Christian even in Judea. Then goes furthermore. Then you go up. Go on. This is what Jesus has called us to be a good Christian. You know, being a Christian, we, have, we cannot invent. We cannot suppose. We cannot live our own life. We have to live according to the pattern that Jesus has given us. Dr. Oswald Smith, he says like this. The light that shines the farthest will shine brightest at home. We should be a light and that shine brightest. And when we become a true witness, yeah. we deliver the souls. Because it says in Proverbs 14, 21, a true witness delivered souls. So let us be a, a witness for our Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. He is resurrected and he is not in heaven. He is still with us. Let us be a light.